Hello, welcome. I'm Lena Vigna, Curator of Exhibitions at the Racine Art Museum. I am here this evening with Bruce W. Pepich, who's RAM's Executive Director and Curator of Collections. We are also joined, but you will not see them on camera, by our marketing department, who is making all of this happen for you. We have Jess Lipizzalewski, Marketing and Publications Manager, and Tyler, our Marketing Assistant. And um, First off, I want to thank you so, so, so very much for attending. We were hoping to have an in-person reception this year. Um, virtual receptions are the best that we can do during the pandemic, but to be honest with you, they aren't our favorites because we like to see everybody in person and we know that you all like to interact. Um, we're hoping that in the coming years, um, we can do less and less of the virtual receptions and more and more of the in-person receptions. If you're curious, we make some of the decisions about what events are virtual um, on the experience of whether or not they're going to be very popular. Um, Watercolor Wisconsin is always an incredibly popular reception, which also means we have to be concerned about more public health issues. And we can't social distance very well at Wisdom. Um, so at any rate, again, we really, really appreciate your patience um, because we know this is not everybody's favorite way to experience this evening. Um, I do also want to add a quick plug for the virtual programming that we've been doing over the last year and a half with the pandemic. We have a very small staff and we went into this pretty cold. So it's been a huge, huge learning curve. We have some wonderful social media um, written posts videos, um, the recorded videos, some of these live events. So if you're, if you're curious at all, please check out our website where you can access a lot of this information or through the social media accounts. So this evening we will be presenting awards and Bruce has a presentation about watercolor Wisconsin memorials and he will talk more about what that means. Um, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can access images of all of the works that have been accepted this year. Um, Kendra Volts, who many of you would know because she's handled a lot of the details, will be hosting a walkthrough, but that will not be until February 15th um, at 2 p.m. Again, you'll be able to see all of the images of what's been accepted. If you are a participant in Watercolor Wisconsin this year, you'll be able to access through the member wall, but we are not going to be walking through every single image this evening. Um, the exhibition does open tomorrow. If you are able to um, make it in person, it will run through April 23rd. And as a reminder, our campuses at Wisdom and RAM are both open right now, Wednesday through Saturday from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. I mentioned this briefly, but let me mention it again. As soon as we are done with this presentation, if you would like to, you can go to the website and through um, the Watercolor Wisconsin page through a member wall, you can access all of the images of all of the works that are included this year. If you're a participant in Watercolor Wisconsin this year, you will be able to access this um, without too much trouble. If you do have trouble, you can contact Abby at RAM tomorrow. Her phone number is 619-3539. She will not be available tonight. If you have trouble tonight, you just have to be extra patient and wait until tomorrow. This evening, I'm doing this brief introduction. Then Bruce will walk through the Watercolor Wisconsin Memorial Artists of the last few years. I will follow with merchandise and cash awards. And then Bruce will come back with purchase awards. You are uh, watching this on either Zoom or Facebook, you are all muted, but if you do have questions, we have staff monitoring the chat, so please ask through chat at any time and we will get back to you. Before I turn it over to Bruce, I did want to just throw out a couple more details about this year's Watercolor Wisconsin competition. It is our 55th, so we are incredibly excited about this enduring tradition at Wisdom. This year we have 110 works by 97 artists. Jurors for the exhibition were Sarah Cox and Carol Hennessy. Sarah Cox is the manager of exhibition and collections at the Elmhurst Art Museum in Elmhurst, Illinois. She also manages a Mies van der Rohe design home in the Cormac House. It's located on the museum's campus. Carol Hennessy serves as president of the Watercolor Honor Society and is on the board 
of the Illinois Watercolor Society. She's a watercolor artist and educator who has exhibited both nationally and internationally for over 40 years. So wonderful, distinguished jurors. We thank them. We know it is not easy. You all are incredibly creative and that just makes it all that much harder. Um, but we really appreciate um, their time and attention to making selections this year. And we thank all the artists who entered. It takes a lot to put yourself out there um, and to flex your creative muscle and congratulations on those whose works are accepted. And with that, I will turn this over to Bruce who will walk through his presentation. And remember, if you have any questions, you can address them through the chat. Thanks, Lena. And I'll just underscore, I would much prefer doing this in person with all of you as well. So we're hoping we can do that at this time next year. Um, we're gonna pull up our first image here. Um, since 2015, uh, we have been honoring artists with whom Ram has worked following their deaths in order to honor them and to call the public's attention to their career efforts. Uh, here are images of the men and women we have featured um, so far uh, in these endeavors. And first we have an image of a painting uh, by David V. Holmes titled The Naturalist BC. This is from 1989. It's watercolor, paper, wood, and found objects. Uh, David was born in 1945 and died in 2014 at the age of 69. And uh, his work was presented in conjunction with the 2015 watercolor competition we had work out on display. Uh, David was known for much of his career as a sculptor and creator of environmental installations that featured his talents in working in wood, but also incorporating his considerable abilities as a painter. As he matured in his career, David would move back and forth between created constructed sculptures and paintings. Watercolor Wisconsin gave him the opportunity to create mixed media constructions in which he installed watercolor on paper elements with a variety of found objects to create assemblages and dioramas that always presented his well-known sense of humor. Ram currently holds six examples of his work. Next, uh, we will look at the work of Ruth Miles. And this is her painting, Polygon Proliferation from 1979. It's watercolor, graphite, and paper. Uh, Ruth was born in 1915 and died in 1999 at the age of 84. And her work was also presented in conjunction with the 2015 competition. Ruth was a Milwaukee native and longtime Kenosha resident. She was included in the first watercolor Wisconsin competition in 1966. And her work was also included in 25 additional watercolor shows during her career. Ruth had a quick and inventive mind, and she was able to break images down into repeating visual patterns with an almost mathematic precision. This is an example of her drawing multiple polygon shapes that she delicately accented with subtle washes. Then she cut and layered these elements to accentuate the painting's sense of dimensionality. Graham currently maintains an archive of 24 works by this artist. Uh, next, we're going to look at an image um, by Warrington Colescott. Um, this is his painting titled, God Destroys the Hyatt Regency Wakaloa Resort. And this is from 1992, it's watercolor and ink. Warrington was born in 1921 um, and died in 2018 at the age of 97. Uh, his work was presented two years ago in conjunction with our 2000. Uh, 19 watercolor competition. Warrington came to UW-Madison in the 1960s and remained on the faculty there through the rest of his career, eventually heading the printmaking department. As a printmaker, he is known internationally and collected in museums around the world. His work is prized for its social and historic satire, and he often spoke about being viewed as a version of a political cartoonist, much like Thomas Nast. In his later career, Warrington added watercolor paintings to his body of work while continuing to make prints. Many of his paintings were large scale. He continued his lampooning of the foibles of almost everyone in an effective way that also made us laugh at ourselves. Ram has an archive of 96 prints, watercolors, and drawings by Colescott. 
Next, we're going to look at a, a painting by Lee Weiss. This is her work titled Autumn Ridge from 1966. It's a watercolor on paper. Uh, Lee was born in 1928 and died in 2018 at the age of 90. And her work was also honored um, in conjunction with our 2019 competition. Uh, Lee participated in the first watercolor Wisconsin show in 1966 and in 25 other competitions following that. She was known internationally for her unique ways of depicting the grandness of nature by emphasizing the beauty of its small component parts. In her early career, Lee devised a technique in which she painted on both sides of the paper and picked up paint deposited on her work table to build up textures in her compositions. She maintained an impressive, well-recognized career for decades at a time when this was unusual for many women. Lee served as a model and mentor for three generations of women painters in the Midwest. Graham currently owns eight works by Weiss. Today, we're going to present examples of works by five artists that are on display now in conjunction with the 2021 Watercolor Wisconsin competition. The first of these is Pathways from 1978 through 1997, a watercolor by Robert Burkert. Bob was born in 1930 and died in 2019. Of these artists, Bob Burkert is the first of three who was born and raised in Racine. He gained international attention in the 1960s for the technical advances he brought to silkscreen printing in which he layered ink in ways that gave the illusion that the colors in the silk screen were blending. The landscapes he created in this medium had a subtlety that had not yet been seen before in the serigraphy medium. Bob was interested in drawing his entire life and Ram holds an archive of 45 works that document his achievements in printmaking, drawing frequently in very large scale and painting. His work can be found in museum print and drawing collections around the world. Next, we'll look at an example of a piece by Christopher Johns. This is Untitled from 1980. It's a watercolor and pastel. Uh, Chris was born in 1952 um, and uh, just died this year. He's the second artist we feature this evening who was born and raised in Racine. Early in his career, Chris's work was featured in a group of solo shows of young talent at our Worcester Museum campus. After years as a respected university teacher who spent his career at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge, Chris returned to Racine where his work began to appear in watercolor Wisconsin competitions and the Racine and vicinity show at our Worcester campus. He is known for his large abstract paintings and for his intimate collages of found paper and paint. Chris received a RAM Artist Fellowship in 2020, and we posthumously presented his work this past fall as part of the Fellows 2021 exhibition. Uh, next, we're looking at the work of Edwin C. Kalki. This is titled Rock Art from 2011. It's watercolor and intaglio printing on paper. Ed was born in 1944 and died in 2016. Ed's work was included in the first watercolor Wisconsin competition in 1966 when he was at the young age of 22 and then in 33 subsequent exhibitions for decades that followed. Ed was a respected painter printmaker and was a beloved teacher most known for his affiliation with Carthage College in Kenosha. Ed worked in many printmaking media including lithography, etching and serigraphy. In mid-career, he became interested in hand paper making and in using the textured papers this technique produced for painting and printmaking. He frequently printed imagery in black ink, which he then hand colored in water media. Ed frequently exhibited these in watercolor Wisconsin shows later in his life. Ram holds seven of his pieces in its permanent collection. Next, we're looking at the work of John Crewall. Uh, this is a piece titled Phonetic Cementerine of Digits from 1976. It's watercolor, graphite, and ink, and it's quite small. It's six and three quarters inches uh, tall and five and a quarter inches wide. John was born in 1950 and just died um, this year. 
Uh, he's the third artist we're featuring this evening who was born in Racine. Uh, we viewed John as a surrealist for he created representational image that were filled with almost microscopic details such as lines in someone's face or the veins in the leaves of a plant. Frequently, these visual elements could leave the viewer with the jarring impression that everything around us in the real quote world is not always as it appears. He frequently incorporated text with his images. Some of this text could be deciphered, but not all of it. He worked in incredible detail and in very small scale, creating work that suggested dream imagery or a page from a personal journal. John worked in pencil, ink, and watercolor, and Ram has an archive of 30 examples of his work. And then last tonight, we're going to look at the work of Helen Napier. Uh, this is her painting, Loosely Related, uh, created in 2001. It's watercolor and graphite. It's also very small in scale. It's five inches tall by five and a quarter inches wide. Helen was born in 1934, and she died in 2016. Helen came to Kenosha well into her mid-career period with the background as a gallerist and an artist. She quickly became an active member of the Kenosha Racine Arts community, entering competitions and eventually running a gallery on the Kemper campus in Kenosha that featured many regional artists. Now, this took time away from her own studio practice, but she did this in order to help other artists' careers. Helen's own work included small-scale watercolor and graphite abstractions that pull you into them. She could spend a great deal of time achieving the perfect relationships between color and shapes in these pieces that appear to be quick records of her impressions, which in reality are anything but that. Ram has an archive of 29 examples of Helen's works. So it, it's, a, it's an honor for us to call uh, attention to the accomplishments of, of all of these artists. There, you know, I always talk about how the artists in the museum's permanent collection um, are members of our extended family of, of artists. And uh, these are examples of people that we, that we really have, have valued and we will continue to value and present in coming years. Lena. And let me follow up on that by making sure to underscore that if you are able to visit the Wisdom campus um, to see the exhibition in person, the five last works that Bruce walked through, the memorial works, the three smaller works are on the first floor outside of Trisha Blasco's office, and the two larger works, that would be the Burkert and the Johns, are on the second floor stairwell, in case you want to look um, for those in particular. Now I am on to announcing the merchandise and cash prize winners for this year's competition. Um, a big, huge thank you to the sponsors. Um, merchandise awards include art materials and supplies, art books and gift certificates contributed by national art materials manufacturers, excuse me, regional art supply stores and national publishers. And we have multiple staff that work on organizing this um, and we're pleased to be able to share that with you. If you are a merchandise award winner, you will be able to pick up your prizes at Wisdom. If you have won a cash award, um, checks will be mailed. And as I walk through these, I will be listing what the merchandise um, details are with each piece. So bear with me. And again, um, feel free to ask questions in the chat if you have any. So our first merchandise award winner is Patrick Doman from Cedarburg um, for his work titled Heading Out. You can see it here on the screen. And with that, he will be receiving Koi watercolor, blue watercolor, Strathmore pad, a Mag Eyes magnifiers, Bob Nugent book, and a Beth Van Hosen book. And our next winner would be Andrea Steiner from Milwaukee for her work entitled Tail, Pale Blue Dot. She will receive a Logan mat cutter and a Strathmore watercolor pad. Next merchandise award winner is Carlotta Miller from Kenosha for her work entitled Evening Radiance. She will receive a Blick gift certificate, a Mamieri blue paint set, Strathmore pad, Mag Eyes magnifier, 18 by 18 inch canvas panel, a Beth Van Hosen creature and infinite eye book. Next merchandise award winner is Lance Reichert from Racine, the piece titled Lena One. 
Lance will receive an Amico gift certificate, Mamieri watercolors, Strathmore pad, a 24 by 24 inch canvas panel, a Beth Van Hosen book, and a Dear Went travel roll. Our next winner is Diane Shibino from Wausau for the work titled Thicket. She will receive an ampersand gift certificate, a 24 by 24 inch canvas panel, and a Joyce Tremaine book. I will also interrupt this to say, as a reminder, the jurors pick the, um, these merchandise and cash award winners, just to clarify. Our next merchandise winner um, is Lisa Englander from Racine. Silhouette Shards, she will get a Dick Blick gift certificate and a Canson watercolor pad. Our next winner would be James Hartell from Greendale for the work title Gravity. He receives a 24 by 30 inch canvas panel, a Strathmore pad, a watercolor book, artist loft brushes, and a book on Bob Nugent. And then we will go to our merit winner. Um, first merit winner that I'm announcing is Sue Horton from Franksville for playing the mellow notes. There, so there's a cash award here, and then there's also a small merchandise prize with this, an eight by eight inch canvas panel, watercolor pencils, and a Mag Eyes hat and magnifier. Our next winner would be Jean Crane from Ozaki for Autumn Rhythm. Um, cash award, and then also a six by six inch canvas panel, pencils, and a pencil case. Our next winner is Harold Hansen from Hartford. Arc du Carousel from the Musée de Louvre. Um, for this, there's a cash award, an eight by eight inch canvas panel, um, pencil, and sketchbook. Now we're shifting to the third award winner for Bruce Hustad from Cedarburg for Moon Growing Over Garden Globe. And Bruce receives a cash award for that, excuse me. Our second award winner receiving cash is Carrie Hunkel from Madison for It Takes a Village. And our first award winner is Daniel Torres from Madison, a cash award a uh, gift uh, for the piece titled Resonance. And the cash award amounts for those top three awards are? 400 for the first award, 300 for the second award, and 200 for the third award. Thank you. Yes, of course. And now Bruce will walk through the purchase awards. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alina. Um, we're gonna stay on Daniel Torres's uh, piece titled Resonance um, because uh, it's one of our first four it's the first of our four pieces we're acquiring for the museum's permanent collection this evening and announcing and we're particularly excited because because each of the four artists whose work we're buying their pieces are entering the museum's permanent collection for the first time so we're looking forward to having the same kinds of of familial relationships with them that we had with many of the other artists i spoke about uh, earlier whose work uh, have, has been in uh, numerous watercolor shows so um we're purchasing the Daniel Torres piece titled The Resonance with the Vera Ration Memorial Purchase Award. Uh, Vera was a dedicated and long-term volunteer who was active in RAM's education programs for children. She was very imaginative and would have responded to the concept behind this, young, uh, behind this work of a young person musing about the world and the universe around her. It's a very good fit of, of Henri um, and artist's work. Um, next, we're going to look at um, the second purchase, and this is uh, Virgil and Driscoll's painting titled Acts of War Afghanistan. Um, and this is from 2021. The Taurus was from 2019. Um, we're purchasing this with the Dennis Kruger and William Mork Memorial Purchase Award. Uh, Dennis and William were long-term life partners who admired creativity. Uh, we're honoring them by purchasing a, a serious painting about a historic event with contemporary implications, the war in Afghanistan. And it's, it will be um, important, I think, for the future to document these kinds of uh, artists' response to uh, political and, and also uh, historic activities that, that are occurring in our time. Um, next, we're going to look at the third purchase, which is James 
Hartel's painting titled Gravity. This was created in 2020. Uh, this um, is the John uh, Crewall Memorial Purchase Award. Um, as I mentioned earlier, John was a surrealist recognized for his draftsmanship and his attention to detail. And I think he would be pleased to have this purchase made in his name because James Hartel's, James Hartel's attention to details in how he depicts the face of his subject at almost a surrealist um, edge to this composition. I, I should point out, um, although the judges make the, the decisions on who receives the, the merchandise and cash awards, our staff um, makes the determinations on what we are uh, purchasing for the museum's permanent collection because we know um, what we have to, to pick up in order to, you know, to, to fill the appropriate spots in the collection. It is a, a delight to be able to, to uh, purchase so many pieces um, this year that, that were uh, award winners, which is always a nice record of the, the show. And then last but not least, our fourth purchase, we can pull that up for you, here we go, is Diane Shabino's Adolescent Acorn II. Uh, this was created in 2019. This is the Celine Stewart and Bonnie Knope Memorial Purchase Award. We honor two accomplished women with this award. Celine was a creative person who was active in business for many years, but she also had an accomplished musical talent. I think she would have responded to the almost musical use of color and form in this painting. Bonnie was an active member of the local arts community that was involved at Wisdom as teachers and exhibiting artists. Bonnie's early career experiences were as a student in our children's art classes at our Wisdom campus, and she went on to study art at UW-Madison and to teach art in area schools. I think she would have responded positively to the well, way this painting looks at nature in such an imaginative way. Each of these works will bear labels noting their memorial purchases from this year's show whenever they're displayed at both of our museum campuses, but also when we lend um, works from the museum's permanent collection to other museums and galleries, it will also uh, bear that label. We um, loaned uh, a painting that we bought in the last two years uh, by Katie Mussoff to the Birds and Art Show up at the Woodson recently, and it carried all that data with it um, in, the, in the exhibition catalog and also on the wall label. And we're really proud to tie our reputation as an institution in with our artists' reputations as well. Lena? I am just here to wrap this up. If there are any questions, you have a minute or two to get those into the chat. We offer a final thank you for joining us. Again, our uh, exhibition is technically opening tomorrow and running through April 23rd. And again, our hours at the Wisdom Campus are Wednesday through Saturday from noon to four. Also, if you want to take the time to walk through all of the images of the works that were accepted, you would be able to do so now. Um, and if you have trouble accessing that, again, you can contact Abby tomorrow at RAM um, with, with questions. So thank you and um, have a wonderful end of the year. Happy and holidays. Happy holidays. to wrap it up again. It was good to see all of you. Thanks again for joining.